everyone talking about the top 10 Joe Malone fragrances. Couple disclaimers, these are just my opinions about my 10 favorites, not saying these are objectively the top 10. And I don't tend to like as many of the Joe Malone kind of darker fragrances like Myrrh and Tonka or the Oud Bergamot one or a lot of the other ones like that. Even though I do like some of those notes separately, for some reason I'm just not a big fan of the way Joe Malone does those. So these are going to lean towards the kind of fresher side. But yeah, let's jump in, start with 10 going all the way to number one. So 10 is Scarlet Poppy. Really interesting and unique, but still very wearable in my opinion. There's like a barley note in it that you don't see that too often. And combined with some of the sweet notes, it almost smells like kettle corn to me, but not in a bad way. It has like a really subtle gourmand side of it to me. Um, but again, not like I think somebody's gonna smell you and think like, oh, you smell like kettle corn, that's weird. Just that sort of like kind of salty sweet vibe. This, I wouldn't say it's like sexy, but it's like a cozy fragrance. And it leans more feminine than my personal taste to wear, but I do think it could still be unisex. And overall, just I think it's really well done. And I like that it's unique, but not off-putting style unique. Next up, a classic orange blossom worn by Jimin from BTS. Very pleasant and uplifting, creamy, floral, orange blossom scent. When I first tried this, it was winter, it was cold, and I was just like, eh. I mean, but I don't really get this. Like, why do people act like this is so great? But when I smelled it again in 100 degree weather, yes, I totally get it. So definitely leans feminine. Uh, not my preferred type of orange blossom scent to wear, definitely on the floral side, but it smells really nice and I enjoy smelling it on other people. I know people who this is their signature scent. And yeah, it just smells really good and it's pleasant to be around, especially in hot weather. Number eight, basil and neroli so green fresh and uplifting and it kind of has actually an interesting sort of intriguing edge to it slightly from the basil as well and the like rootsiness of the vetiver and to me that kind of actually makes it more unique than some other green neroli fragrances which tend to be kind of as much as i often like them a dime a dozen uh, this is really versatile too it could be worn for like anything from kind of a workout to a fancy occasion. So it's always nice to find something that can work for just so many different things as like a quote, quote, dumb reach. Very unisex overall to me. Next up, grapefruit. And this is not as simple of like a one note grapefruit type of vibe as you might think. To me, it could almost be called like grapefruit Christmas tree and not, not in a bad way. I think it's a really interesting mix of like green fresh spicy and grapefruit and a little bit earthy uh, i think it's like actually a more refined and elegant take on grapefruit than the typical one but it still has that classic kind of grapefruit feel really well blended fresh green and simple yet also unique so as with all joe malone fragrances i guess about simple most of them are definitely going to be on the more simple end but i kind of like that they manage to do things in a way where it's using a simple core and then kind of making it still feel light and still a little bit different and they just have their own kind of spin on things number six fig and lotus flower this is really fresh and vibrantly airy to me it's evocative of like imagining being at a flower market surrounded by fig trees while drinking a glass of coconut milk i don't, I don't think i'd actually like being in that actual scenario but i like the smell really beautiful scent um as it progresses, the fig starts to drift away. It becomes greener. This, for the first phase of it, leans a bit more stereotypically feminine to me, but very unisex by the dry down. Of course, being a Jo Malone fragrance, the dry down does not last very long, but I find it like relaxing and inspiring while it does. So short-lived, but I enjoy it while it's going on. Top five now, number five is Silver, Birch, and Lavender. And I've smelled so many fragrances out there like this, but there's something about this that just kind of like distills the vibe of these type of fragrances into a really nice and elegant, but not old or unaccessible or dated, just simple, nice way. I think it's a really good combination of kind of the sophisticated side of lavender, but also using kind of the more traditional powdery and sweet kind. I don't usually like neither, necessarily either of those directions, but I kind of really like how they did this with the combination really clean smelling and this is very versatile as well very unisex and if anything i think it would lean a bit more masculine at times number four wood sage and sea salt most people have probably heard of or tried this one uh probably my favorite use of seaweed is a note that i've ever tried it does not smell like seaweed in a gross pungent way 
it just kind of adds a light oceanic feel to it, but without turning it into like, you know, major salty aquatic the way that some things do. It's really subtle, which again, true of most Jo Malone fragrances, but this to me isn't just about projection or longevity being subtle. It's like the scent itself is very laid back. So it's just a nice thing to throw on when you want kind of like a laid back, low key energy. And uh, yeah, it has a nice kind of dry down too that take that. So this one is less linear to me than some Jo Malone fragrances too. Like it just feels like it kind of gets more and more down to the essence of it by the dry down. Number three, I really like this one. And I just think it's so unique. Green wheat and meadow sweet. It really does smell like wheat in an outdoorsy way, but uh, like not like a piece of bread or cereal or something, but like literally like a field of wheat. Really green, of course, on the subtle side being Jo Malone. And one of definitely the more realistic naturey fragrances that I have smelled, almost like if you picture Diptyque Philosophos kind of vivid green bat vibe, but for a wheat field with some flowers instead of being about like a fig tree. There's just this like creamy, green, vivid, naturey aspect to it that I just find so addictive. And that one can be harder to find a bottle of. For all of these, I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can get a bottle or a sample. But for that one, I would say check eBay. It's totally still available. You can get big enough decants to wear it, but it's not necessarily on any one common fragrance site. Number two, Blackberry and Bay. So this one disappears so quickly, but if we're just talking about the scent itself, really nice. It almost reminds me of, for anybody who uh, has had these, the Crystal Geyser Juice Squeeze drinks, like really fresh with like a bubbly, sparkly side to it, really bright, like a nice tang, and also very green and natural smelling, just uplifting in a really pleasant way. And yeah, this is in my top two, so obviously I really like it. It does get a little bit more bitter from like the bay as it starts to dry down, but that blackberry in the opening is just amazing to me. Just probably the best use of blackberry I've ever tried. My all time favorite and one that would be full bottle worthy for me if it worked better with my skin chemistry. I know I say that a lot and it probably sounds kind of weird, but it really, there's so many things that I try. I love it on the test strip. When I try it on my skin, it just does not work well with my skin. You know, things can change so much on different people. Sometimes I smell these on other people's skin and they smell great, but something about it just didn't really work for me. But I loved this one on the test strip and I really like it on other people. Yuja, this leans a bit more masculine than a lot of the other ones in the list, which many were unisex. There were some that I mentioned that were feminine leaning. But this is like a really bright, citrus, like foresty fragrance, really fresh and pleasant, but it has like a lot of depth from the greenery aspect of it too. So I like that it's not just like some little fresh and pleasant float away, like a lot of Jo Malone, but there's like that green gravity to it as well. So that one, oh, I just love smelling it. It's so good. Um, as mentioned, I will put links in the description where you can get a bottle or sample of any of these. I obviously have not tried every Jo Malone fragrance that's ever been in existence. I've tried about 35 or so though. So this still did require narrowing it down and definitely tossing some stuff off the list. I did not include her Joe Loves line that she started after she left the Joe Malone company. Maybe I'll do a separate video on those. They also have like a bit of a different vibe than these kind of things. But if you like fresh fragrances, I like the, you know, I definitely would recommend these. Just don't go into it thinking that with Joe Malone, you're going to get much longevity or tons of projection. So this is the type of thing where either spray it, just you want to have something nice on or like office safe type of thing that's not going to bother anybody or put it on right before, you know, within an hour before. So you're gonna see somebody that you want to smell this on you. So that type of thing. So they're marketed as colognes, meaning that they're low uh, percentage of like the actual fragrance in it. So they're not trying to claim these are projection monsters or anything like that, and they're not. But as long as you go into that knowing it and use these for the type of situations they work for, I think all of these are fantastic.